Of course, Bugs' fans knew who was really responsible for his enduring appeal. What's up, Doc? Bugs himself. As one young boy exclaimed upon hearing that Chuck Jones drew Bugs Bunny, Oh, no, he does not. He draws pictures of Bugs Bunny. How do? Welcome to my shop. And then there was Mel. Mel Blank. Ah, uh, they were inseparable in those days. In the beginning, Mel was an aspiring voice man, and Bugs, well, he was still just another supporting player. But Mel gave Bugs that taste of Brooklyn meets the Bronx. Although your face looks like it might have gone through a machine. They hit it off from the very start and stayed together, partners for more than 50 years. You, you missed me, Doc. Shall we try it again? My way? But in 1961, disaster struck. Mel was the victim of a terrible car crash on Sunset Boulevard's treacherous dead man's curve. For weeks, he was laid up in a coma, and no amount of pleading or praying could rouse him. That is, until his doctor thought to whisper in his ear, How are you feeling today, Bugs Bunny? And from beneath the bandages, Mel whispered, hey, Just fine, Doc. How are you? And from that day on, Mel always swore that Bugs saved his life. Still, the tough news kept on coming, and the boys in the front office saw it first. Television was on the rise, and movies were on the outs. They had to cut costs, and cut costs they did. They shut it all down. Yes, all of it. And even Bugs Bunny, the biggest star of them all, was forced into early retirement. They gave him one last picture, a final short called False Hair, and sent him packing. Well, here we are, Pismo Beach, and all the claims we can eat. But a funny thing happened on the way to Pismo Beach. The Bugs Bunny Show. Television gave Bugs a new lease on life. In 1960, Bugs was back, hosting his very own primetime TV show for ABC. Was it a smash, you ask? Boy, was it! And after two seasons, the show moved to Saturday morning, where a whole new audience of youngsters learned to memorize his catchphrases What's up, Jack? and imitate his droll attitude, just like their parents did when they were kids. <laughs> Gruesome, isn't it? Bugs Bunny was no faded movie star. He was as big as ever. A household name, a pop culture icon, a brand. He sold clothes and board games, dolls and toys, sing-along records, and comic books. Whoops! I'm due on the set. Goodbye! And wouldn't you know it, those tough talkers from the Warner front office came banging on Bugs' door. Soon enough, they had him back in movie theaters and in a series of popular TV specials. The cartoons continued, and so did the awards. TV Guide named Bugs the greatest cartoon character of all time. That little mouse down the road placed 19th. He got his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and he beat Mickey once again by being the first to have his cartoon kisser planted on a U.S. postage stamp. So, don't be putting Bugs out to pasture yet. There's a lot of life left in this old rabbit. As the 24th and a half century has already shown, for Bugs Bunny, that's not all, folks. And that's the end.